If you ask most people to list their senses, they'll list touch, taste, smell, sight, and hearing. While those are all senses, uh, touch is a general sense. So we're going to go a little bit more in depth on your special senses, which are your other four, plus one that most people usually don't really think about. So your general senses, of course, are going to be of touch. Uh, you can um, sense temperature changes, pressure with those deep pressure receptors, and pain. And your special senses are going to be smell, taste, sight, hearing, and equilibrium. Remember, smell is also called olfaction. Uh, taste is called uh, gustation and uh, sight, you know, just vision. And then we'll talk about hearing and equilibrium together with the ear. So we'll start off with the eye and vision. Um, about 70% of all your receptors, sensory receptors are in your eyes. Uh, I know that seems like a lot and that your eyes aren't very big. However, we really only see about one sixth of our eye from the exterior of our body. Uh, each eye does have over a million nerve fibers. Um, the optic nerve is extremely thick in comparison to the other nerves in your body. And um, of course your eye is protected. Um, most of it's going to be surrounded by the bony orbit made up of bones of your skull. And then you do have a cushion of fat that surrounds most of your eye. So some accessory structures of your eye, we have of course the eyelids and the eyelashes, which I know most of the time we don't really think of eyelashes as protection, but they do help to keep things from falling down and uh, touching your actual eyeball. The conjunctiva, um, you may have heard of conjunctivitis before, we'll touch on that in a second. The lacrimal apparatus, which is going to be your tears. And then your extrinsic eye muscles, which are going to be what allow uh, you to move your eyes around. So your eyelids and your eyelashes, um, you do have tar uh, tarsal glands that are going to help lubricate your eye. And then you have ciliary glands that are located between your eyelashes. And um, those are also going to be um, helping lubricate your eye. The conjunctiva is actually a membrane that lines your eyelids. This is what pretty much keeps your eyelids uh, suctioned down to the actual eye, um, which is why you have to work a little bit to pull them away from the eye. And it secretes a mucus to help lubricate the eye as well. And if you've ever heard of conjunctivitis, if you've gotten an eye infection, that does become inflamed and becomes pretty painful. The lacrimal apparatus, so this is going to be your tears. Let's see if I can spill that out there. So your lacrimal gland is going to be your tear gland. Um, it is going to be located um, just superficial to your actual eye. Um, and it does produce lacrimal fluid, which those are going to be your tears. And the lacrimal can, uh, canals are going to be what drain the tears um, from your eyes. So the lacrimal ap apparatus, remember, does include all of the different structures that are going to help produce the tears, um, drain them onto your actual eye, and then drain them out of your eye. Uh, the lacrimal sac, so here we have the lacrimal gland, right there. The um, excretory ducts, are going to be what releases them actually into your eye and you're constantly actually producing tears uh, it's just that the you have a drainage system called the lacrimal sac um, that allows the tears to drain out of your eye and it actually empties into your nose which is why whenever you're crying lots of times your nose will start running because that fluid is being released into your um, nostrils. So normally we produce our tears, they'll flow out onto the eye, and um, like I said, these ducts right here, uh, the canaliculus, nasolacrimal ducts, um, are going to drain the lacrimal fluid into the lacrimal sac, 
and down here. So whenever you start crying due to some type of an emotional trigger, it's kind of like a drainage system that helps to prevent flooding. It starts building up a lot and it can't drain it fast enough. So that's when you start getting, of course, the spilling over and you get your tears running down your face. And, um, which is another reason why sometimes people will actually kind of, uh, not really cry, but their eyes will water up when they're laying on the side. Um, just because if you're laying on the side, it's not going to drain. If you're laying on this side, the lacrimal fluid isn't going to drain upwards, so it will just kind of drip out onto the side. So usually we just say that our eyes are watering. Um, so the function of your tears, of course, are going to help to protect, moisten, and lubricate your eyes. Like I said, they do empty into the nasal cavity. And it is a dilute salt solution, so if you've ever tasted your tears as you're got tears running down your face they do taste kind of salty but it is mostly going to be made up of water so some h2o and it also contains antibodies and lysozymes remember lice means to break down and so these are going to be enzymes pretty much that are going to help um, protect your eyes along with your antibodies which also serve as um, protection the extrinsic eye muscles are going to be the muscles that allow you to actually move your eyes around without having to actually move your head. You do have six of them and they attach to the outer surface of your eye. As you can see right here, you have the lateral rectus muscle, the superior rectus muscle, superior oblique muscle, so that's going to allow for those diagonal movements. Uh, let's see right here, the inferior oblique muscle, the inferior rectus muscle, and um, back there you can actually see the optic nerve which continues out in that direction. It is a very, very, very big nerve. So um, differing contractions is what's going to allow for all of those different um, eye movements. And this is showing just the different um, actions that they allow for. So you have muscles that will allow them to move uh, laterally, so towards the sides, medially, so towards the midline, um, elevating your eye and turning it medially, so looking up and inward, uh, depressing your eye and turn it medially, so looking like down towards your nose, elevating your eye and turning it laterally, so looking up and out, and then, of course, depressing your eye and turning it laterally, so looking down and outward towards the side. And these are going to be the controlling nerves. Um, they are cranial nerves, so they do branch directly off the brain. So structures of the eye, um, we do have uh, several layers that are going to form the wall of the eyeball. We have the fibrous layer, which is going to be the outside layer the vascular layer, which is going to be the middle layer. And of course, vascular, you're going to think of blood, something is vascularized. And then the sensory layer, um, where your sensory receptors are going to be located, is going to be the innermost layer. So you can see right here, we have the outer layer, which back here is going to be the sclera, or the white of your eye. It continues in the front as the cornea. And then the middle layer, that vascular layer, is made up of the choroid. And I cannot circle that very well. And then the inner layer of the wall, um, your sensory layer, is going to be your retina. And you can see uh, the retina actually continues down, and that is what's going to form your optic nerve. So here's just looking at an actual image of the eyeball. You can uh, see the obvious layers. Now the retinal layer is going to be kind of that whitish layer back there. And it's extremely thin, extremely delicate. I think y'all did dissect uh, the eye freshman year. I'm not sure. I'll have to double check on that. But you can see the different layers. So you see the outer layer with the sclera, the choroid layer, which is the brownish layer, and then the inner layer is the retina. And right here you can see 
the lens, and then um, you have two obvious cavities, the anterior and the posterior, which are going to be filled with completely different types of fluids. And we will stop there for now and continue up with the uh, more specifics on the structure of the eye later on.